In what's become a crusher Christmas tradition, in today's episode, we're looking at the Christmas haul, which includes some awesome vintage action figures generously gifted to me by my brother, a pair of close mates, and even a couple of things that I've shouted myself. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? Hope you had an awesome Christmas. If you celebrate it, I hope it was a fun one. If you don't, I hope you got to have the day off work and just enjoy that public holiday and spend it however you want to in your own way. I had an awesome Christmas. Spent the day out at my brother's place as we've done for the last few years now. Lots of food, great Christmas dinner, a couple of beers, uh, and just awesome time spent with family and with all the dogs and, uh, and just a great day. I'm back home now. It's the afternoon of Boxing Day here. And you know, when you're someone like me who just really looks forward to Christmas Day and takes advantage of that build up towards Christmas and watching all the movies and, and all those things, uh, I, I, I typically feel a little bit of a lull after Christmas Day when you realize it's over for another year. Um, but that's just the way it goes. And if there's one surefire way, as we've discussed on previous Christmas haul videos, if there's one surefire way to make me feel that little bit better, it's to share a beer and a chinwag with you guys and take you through some awesome vintage toys that I was lucky enough to open up on Christmas morning, or in the case of one package here, that I'm excited to open up with you guys. Now, as I've mentioned in previous Christmas haul videos, you might have figured this out already, I'm a weirdo. Uh, I like to wrap up a couple of things for myself. So any of my usual online purchases that arrive in the lead up to Christmas, like in the last kind of four to six weeks prior to Christmas, I'll wrap up, I'll stick under the tree, and it gives me that Christmas morning, 80s, 90s Christmas morning feeling at least as close as it gets. So I've got a couple of things that I bought myself that I'll take you guys through as well. But first, before we get into all that, um, I wanna take you through a couple of awesome items that my brother gifted me. So. We do a secret Santa in our family, and lucky for me, my brother drew my name out of the hat because he gets me. He knows what I'm into, and um, and he's hooked me up with a couple of awesome pieces for the collection. So first up, my brother sorted me out with this guy right here. This is Spike from the 1993 Super Mario Brothers movie action figure line made by Ertl, E-R-T-L, Ertl. I don't know if it's an acronym or if it's the name of the toy manufacturer, but like I said, we've got Spike here, no weapons, none of his, well, he only came, these figures only came with one accessory for the most part, but we don't have his accessory, uh, but that's okay. This guy right here will be an awesome placeholder in the collection. A fun little action figure line, we're talking six figures. Pretty cool figures, actually. Um, not the greatest of films, at least as I remember it from my childhood, uh, but, but a pretty cool figure line, a figure line I'm having fun collecting. So we've got Spike right here. He's in decent condition, he's missing a little bit of paint, from that awesome gold chain there. Uh, but that's okay, placeholder in the collection until I can find a complete version, uh, or maybe a version in a little bit better condition, and we'll keep our eye out for the accessory that Spike came with. So we've got Spike in the collection, and now we only need one more figure from that Super Mario Brothers movie line. I only need Iggy now. I've got Mario, Luigi, I've got the Goomba, I've got King Koopa, we've got Spike, and now we just need Iggy. So we're getting there with the Super Mario Brothers movie line. And next up from my brother, I've got this awesome 1997 Universal Monsters Burger King Frankenstein's Monster Toy. Now, I've been trying to get more and more Universal Monsters representation in the collection for some time. I really love some of those Remco and Mego Universal Monsters figures that came out in the 70s and the early 80s. Um, the line that I love most of those is the 1981 Remco Mini Monsters line. Now, those figures are really hard to come by here in Australia. You might recall if you've seen my Lobos Collectibles Melbourne Toy Hunt video, there was a carded Dracula version there. But in terms of loose figures as I like to collect them, I rarely if ever see them. Uh, but I really like this Burger King figure. Came out in 1997, so a much later release, probably the latest released item that I've got in my collection. I tend to cut things off at around about the mid 90s. But this figure feels very much like a nod to that early 80s Remco line in terms of the scale and the simplicity of the sculpt. I really love the translucent head and hands. At first when I opened this, I actually thought this might have been a glow in the dark feature, but it's actually just kind of a simple translucent plastic. And the reason for that is this figure was released with a little operating table accessory. And there was a play feature on that operating table to turn a little blinking light on that glowed through the head of the Frankenstein's monster figure. So 
it would be awesome to to one day land that operating table accessory but for now i'm really happy with this frankenstein's monster figure and i'm definitely going to keep my eye out for the rest of the universal monsters burger king toys from 1997 so i'm stoked with this guy Alrighty, next up i'm incredibly grateful to have this gift right here from my good mates matt and andrew from the youtube channel keep on collecting unexpected but tremendously appreciated and i can't wait to rip into this now full disclosure i do know what's in here already uh, reason for that is uh, Matt spilled the beans to me when I was actually telling him that I was looking to purchase some figures from the same line. Matt said, hey, listen, don't purchase these ones because this is what I've got you. He wanted to make sure I didn't double up. And so I know what's in here, but that hasn't taken away from my enthusiasm to tear into this. It's figures that I've been wanting in the collection for ages, and I've never actually held them in my hand. So I can't wait. I can't wait. Before we rip into this, I do have a beautiful card from the boys. I did open this yesterday morning because I wanted to I wanted to read it and send those guys a message. I will read it out to you guys. It's it look this says a lot about just how awesome and genuine and kind Matt and Andrew from Keep on Collecting are. I don't think they'll mind I read this to you very quickly. So uh, I'll do that. So happy Christmas Scott. What a fantastic year as 2021 closed, we met you and had a new mate as 2022 closes. We have a friend, a confidant and someone who we love to hang out with and talk all things toys and life. Love watching your toy collection grow and being involved in your collecting journey, my friend. We can't wait to see where our 2023 journey takes us with you, your mates, Matt and Andrew. Boys, I, I sent the guys a message of thanks and appreciation yesterday for this and just shared that, you know, it goes both ways. I I think the world of those guys, they make my they make the hobby of collecting that much more fun for me. My friendship with those guys is uh, probably the most special thing to come out of this channel. This channel brings me a ton of joy and, and a big part of that is the toys, but just as big a part of that is the community. And at the top of that is Matt and Andrew, my friendship that I have with those guys. So thank you boys very much. You know, I hope you guys don't mind bearing with me on these thoughts because those guys are really important to me. I know you're here for the toys, so let's get into that now. I'm gonna tear this open and I'll show you what we got. Alrighty, like I mentioned, I know exactly what's in here already and likely you guys have an idea of that already from seeing whatever thumbnail I put together. So we're obviously talking about Skeleton Warriors here with this lot of vintage figures from Matt and Andrew and I can't wait. I've wanted Skeleton Warriors in the collection for ages. With that said, I've got no nostalgic connection from childhood. I don't really remember much about Skeleton Warriors from when I was a kid, but I just appreciate the heck out of the line. I just think it's cool as hell. So let's get in and we'll see what we got from the boys. Alrighty guys, I think it's only right that we start with this guy right here, Baron Dark, the ruler of the Skeleton Warriors, the ruler of the villains within the Skeleton Warriors, which are the Skeleton Legion, and this guy is awesome. Tons of sculpting detail, everything's over the top. We've got, you know, skull trophies worn on his shoulders, we've got this shrunken bearded skull right here, worn like a trophy on his chest, and an awesome dry brushing effect with, which kind of bring to life the skeletal features contrasted with awesome little vac metal details like the gold chrome eyes and the shoes that he's wearing and uh, this guy's just awesome we've got like a pliable plastic cape here i love all the details in his hair now there's another kind of interesting thing with the skeleton warriors line is they all kind of have these these jewels these gemstones within their heads or within their accessories and my Baron Dark has a green gemstone. I believe there were some kind of variant situations going on here. I'm not too sure about that. In my excitement to go through this lot while I was also trying to resist temptation to rip into it before Christmas, I've been doing a little bit of research on the line just to understand the characters and all their unique features because I love all that sort of stuff. Even though I don't have a nostalgic connection with Skeleton Warriors, I love the artistry and the creativity that goes into the character development but also bringing these toys to life. So. I find myself online just going through pictures and reading character bios and all that sort of stuff. So like I said, we've got Baron Dark, the boss of the baddies, and he comes with a whole raft of weapons. 
He's got his bone axe. And again, the sculpting detail is not limited to the figure. Uh, just incredible detail in the accessories. He's got his blaster, which again has a ton of detail. Kind of a little bit of a resemblance to like General Trag's blaster in the TMNT figures. Obviously another Playmates line. And Playmates were absolute geniuses when it came to sculpting detail. Looking at that vintage TMNT line and then Toxic Crusaders with Skeleton Warriors, it just seems like they've, they've continued that artistry in terms of sculpt. So I love it. And last of all, in the weapons, Baron Dark has his spring-loaded sword. And that's another kind of common reoccurring theme of the Skeleton Warriors figures as spring-loaded weapons. So that's awesome. And the cape is also removable, I believe, but we're going to leave that in place. So lots of accessories, lots of detail, lots of accessories that make this line special. And I'm stoked with this Baron Dark. Alrighty, so next up we've I've got accessories going absolutely everywhere. Next up we've got this one right here. We've got Shriek, the evil temptress of the Skeleton Legion. And Shriek is awesome. Look at that beautifully sculpted skeleton. Once again, that amazing dry brush paint style deco. And again, contrasting elements here, like you've got the metallic purple bra. I think that's probably the first time I've said that word on this channel. And then once again, those awesome vac metal details in the tiara, the eyes, that beautiful blue gemstone. Again, I'm sure there's, well, from what I understand, there's some variant situations there with the colors of the stones. Real hair there at the back. We've got the flowing mullet, which is just sexy. And uh, this kind of loincloth feature here. And once again, Shriek comes with awesome accessories. So she's got the blood scythe, which is amazing she also has in the same kind of brown sculpted plastic we've got a beautifully detailed shield with almost like a viking skull sculpt on it which is just incredible she's got a holster so she must or a sheath i should say so she must come with some sort of knife to go at her hip that's amazing and coolest of all, how's this for an accessory? Obviously, Playmates with their TMNT line had all of those sidekick figures like Joe Eyeball to go with Muckman. Well, we've got Crossbone, the Skeleton Dragon sidekick accessory. So that is just awesome. Shriek and Crossbone the Dragon are going to look incredible standing by Baron Dark's side on display in the new Skeleton Warriors display cabinet so I'm absolutely stoked with this Shriek is in the collection okay so you might have caught all of these accessories falling out of the little Ziploc bag that Shriek was in they come with the next and final item in this lot oh I'm losing accessories everywhere I, I mentioned that Sheik must have come with some sort of knife to go in the little sheath there we've got it right there it's fallen between my legs and there it is this is called the skeletal stiletto so this little sheath that must actually clip onto the thigh bone of shriek and it sheaths this awesome knife so that is so cool absolutely stoked with that now as i was saying before you might have seen all of these accessories fall out of the little ziploc bag that shriek was in they actually fix onto the final item in this lot so let's get that out So get a load of this. This is the Skeleton Warrior Skull Cycle. And it is incredible. Let me work out how all of those little accessories fix on and I'll show you this thing in its complete form. And here we have it guys, the Skull Cycle. Check this thing out. This is awesome. I absolutely love it. I love the massive skull at the front with this big long blade now inside the skull is where the missile launcher is there is a button somewhere here to launch the missile now unfortunately it's missing the missile that's the only thing it's missing so I'll, I'll definitely be on the hunt for that but I don't even care about that this thing is incredible um, now it's got some play features going on so it, it goes between attack mode and patrol mode I believe it's called with the wings that go up and down 
and the fork that extends out at the front, the big blade extending. And this thing's incredible. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if in the world of the Skeleton Warriors, if this is like a road vehicle or an aircraft, because it kind of combines elements of like a chopper motorcycle with, you know, futuristic aircraft elements. This thing is just incredible and I love it. Now, I think that I've put it together correctly, like the, the wings go up and down correctly. So I think that's how everything here is meant to go. If you see any kind of glaring issues with this thing, definitely let me know. Now there is one accessory that I'm not sure what to do with. I've got this plate accessory here. I'm assuming that goes with this because it doesn't seem to be a weapon for a figure, but I'm not quite sure where it goes. So if anyone knows, definitely let me know, but I absolutely love this thing. Now it does have, it does have little wheels in the bottom. So, you know, it can roll along a flat surface. You know, back in the day, if you were playing with it, you can roll it along the living room floor. And this thing is unbelievable. How cool is that? And it's just in beautiful condition, like there's no, it doesn't appear to have really been played with much. The stickers are in perfect working order. And everything just looks fantastic. It looks fresh out of the box and I, I'm so pumped. So Matt, Andrew, once again, guys, thank you so much for that. What an awesome lot to get my Skeleton Warriors collection. We've got the main bad guy in Baron Dark. We've got his evil temptress in Shriek and we've got the Baron's Ride with the Skull Cycle. So this thing is incredible and I'm so happy with it, guys. Thank you so much. Now, it's just occurred to me that that lot of Skeleton Warriors that the guys have hooked me up with actually came with a couple of extra goodies. So we've got the original insert that came with the Skull Cycle. So I'm gonna have to read over this and just check that I've actually put it together because I was just trying to do it based on what seemed right so that is awesome we've got the original insert so i can check that i've assembled it correctly we've actually got some unapplied stickers this will be heaps of fun like i can have a squeeze to see but if based on like the the original box art if it's missing any stickers and if so i can apply some of those skulls or some of those skeleton warriors logo decals and check this thing out right here this, I'm assuming this is a poster that came with a figure or it might have come with the vehicle. Look at that artwork. So on this side of this poster, we've got this beautiful, glossy, incredible like pencil and paint drawing of the Skeleton Warriors. And on the back, we've got a bit of a comic story going on here. So that is so cool. I'm so pumped with this. So once again, Matt, Andrew, thank you so much. I'm incredibly grateful. I can't wait to get these guys on display. Just before Christmas, I actually did a little bit of rearranging. So I've got some shelf space right on, on the end there at the top of one of my detolfs, where at least for the time being, that's where the Skeleton Warriors are gonna be displayed. So boys, thank you again. But the Skeleton Warriors doesn't stop there. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm a bit of a weirdo. When it comes to the online pickups that come just before Christmas, I'll wrap them up and they'll go under the tree. Now. I mentioned at the start that I knew what was in this package from the boys because I said to Matt, I'm purchasing some Skeleton Warriors. Can you believe it? Matt knows how long I've been looking forward to trying to get Skeleton Warriors in the collection. And Matt just said, hey, listen, I've got some for you already. So make sure you don't purchase the same ones. Interestingly enough, the ones that I've purchased actually came from the same seller as, as the ones Matt picked up. So thankfully they're not double ups and I'll take you through the Skeleton Warriors that I bought for myself in the lead up to Christmas. So first up in the Skeleton Warriors that I picked up for myself, we've got one of the coolest figures. This has to be surely one of the coolest figures in the line, Dr. Cyborg. Get a load of this guy. He is so awesome. So once again, we've got the classic skeletal sculpted and painted details. Once again, contrasting with some futuristic vac metalized components, but this one takes it to a whole nother level. This guy is the mad scientist of the Skeleton Legion. This is Baron Dark second in command. So this guy is the, you know, the evil mad scientist and he's got a lot of cybernetic vac metalized components. So this guy's rib cage is completely hollow and inside you can see gold chromed machinery. We've got piping in there and all sorts of awesome cybernetic componentry. We've got like a bionic arm here. We've got a vac metalized articulated jaw. This thing is incredible. I absolutely love, like I've said a million times, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but the contrast between the skeletal features and the vac metalized futuristic stuff, that always floats my boat. Once again, we've got an awesome pliable plastic cape. We've again got that gemstone. So 
I mentioned the gemstones with the other figures. I believe Baron Dark was green, Shriek was blue, the Skull Cycle was blue, Dr. Cyborn's orange. So I'm not quite sure as to the significance of that. I just think it's pretty damn cool that these guys came out with different colored uh, gemstones sculpted into them. And once again, Dr. Cyborn has awesome accessories with him. This is his spring-loaded acid blaster with the projectile. Just spring-loaded accessories are awesome. And then we've also got a couple of other really cool accessories in his ionizer blaster with, again, like lots of sculpted skull details and his mace accessory. So incredible sculpting, amazing paint deco with all those vac metalized parts and killer accessories. Now, interestingly, with Dr. Cyborn and a few of these figures, like Shriek, for example, they're not particularly hefty, these figures. Like, they're really light and they do feel like if you were the type of kid that just mashed your figures together when you were playing out battle scenarios, these things don't feel like they would have held up particularly well, particularly this guy right here, Dr. Cyborn. Um, but that just, I mean, that makes me all the more grateful that I've got this guy in brilliant condition, complete, you know, and intact. So, um, yeah, incredible. Dr. Cyborn is in the Skeleton Legion. And next up, we've got this guy right here, Dagger. Now, when I first saw pictures of this figure, I kind of got a bit of a pirate's vibe. Obviously, skeletons and pirates go hand in hand, the whole skull and crossbones motif. But reading about this character, this guy is actually the espionage expert in the Skeleton Legion. And this guy is really cool. He's rocking the classic eye patch and, you know, the loincloth and somewhat of a Viking helmet. He's got the red jewel sculpted within the helmet. And once again, Dagger comes with some awesome accessories. So you've got the bone blade, which is the spring-loaded weapon. The projectile that gets launched out of the bone blade is this awesome, like, skull-headed hammer here. So this thing is mad. And then he also comes with a blaster, which is really cool. And just like Shriek, Dagger has the sheath on his hip with a really cool, obviously, you know, as the name would suggest, a dagger there. So that's awesome. And I was talking about Dr. Cyborn being kind of, I don't want to say flimsy, but, you know, very light and somewhat delicate in, in, in its feel. Dagger is the opposite. This guy is like in a squat pose and his rib cage is actually solid. It's a solid piece of plastic just with surface sculpts showing that rib cage there. So this guy actually feels to have a bit more heft. So yeah, once again, we've got another complete skeleton warrior in the collection with Dagger. And the last of the Skeleton Warriors items that I bought for myself to wrap up and pop under the tree, we've got the Skeleton Legion War Horse. And how sick is this thing? So we've got a skeleton horse, amazing sculpting details, some incredible play features. So we've got a missile that's concealed in the kind of chest of the horse that has a button somewhere to launch that. I don't know where it is, so I'm not going to fiddle around with that too much, but the missiles in there, we've got the multi-position battle axe around here, which can kind of be at rest or, or be in attack mode. And uh, this thing is awesome. What is not to love about a skeleton warhorse? Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about the warhorse is there's no real articulation. The tail is articulated, kind of. I mean, it doesn't move a whole lot. It's a little bit pliable. But there's no articulation in the legs, at least as far as I can tell. If I'm wrong and if I'm missing something and these joints are just too tight and I'm too scared to test them, let me know. But I can't actually see any joints in the legs. And likewise, in the, in the head and neck, I can't find any joints. The jaw appears like it has a joint there, but I can't get this to move at all. You know, not that I'm trying to put this thing in a crazy dynamic pose or, or anything like that, but I just thought that was interesting. And I love like all this piping detail here. Once again, it's very Playmates toys. A lot of the Toxic Crusaders and, you know, the 1989, 1990, 1991 uh, TMNT mutant figures have these kind of pipe accessories. So, yeah, really cool. We've got the Skeleton Warhorse in the collection. Oh, and one more thing. As, as always, we've got the gemstone in the, in the horse and the gemstone uh, on the horse is, is a blue one. Once again, just like the Skull Cycle. So, yeah, this thing is awesome. I, I love this Warhorse. Now I just got to work out which skeleton warrior gets to ride the steed, so I'm stoked with this. 
Now this lot of Skeleton Warriors that I purchased for myself for Christmas also came with some of these very cool paper goods. So once again, just like the Skull Cycle, we've got the original insert that came with the War Horse. So that's awesome. Oh, okay, that okay it does show me where that little button is to launch that uh, the missile on the War Horse. Let's have another look at this. So it's actually the little skull up here at the front of the saddle. So, oh shit, there we go. Uh, I wasn't ready for that, I, sh I should have been, but um, yes, that definitely still works as you saw. So that's the, the uh, play feature on the War Horse. But yeah, really stoked to have this insert that, come, that originally came with the War Horse. No sticker sheet for the War Horse, but once again, more of these posters. And it, it appears to be the same artwork on all of these. So I've got two more that came with this lot, which is awesome because I'd like to have one to kind of somehow display with the figures and then maybe there's a spare that I can pop in a frame and put on the wall because I absolutely love this sort of dynamic artwork. Um, it's incredible and it's, it'd be a shame not to display it. So I'm really happy with those. And the cherry on the cake, this, I mean, this was totally not expected because it didn't mention this anywhere in the listing. But we've got some of these Fleer branded trading cards for the Skeleton Warriors. Get a load of the artwork on some of these cards. I'll try and share some close-ups with you guys. But look at that. These definitely have to be displayed. It would be a crying shame not to display these somehow with the figures. So I am stoked with these trading cards. I could look at these things all day. So we've got Dagger. We've got Grim Skull, a figure that I still need to try and get my hands on for my collection. We've got Prince Lightstar, which is the nemesis of... Baron Dark, so he, I believe he's in charge of the good guys. We've got the incredible Dr. Cyborn. And that's it for the Fleer card. So I love little bonuses like this. Like it doesn't have to be much and I never expect it. But when you order something on eBay, whether it's a single item or a lot, it's always so special when you get a little extra freebie thrown in. So I'm stoked with that. And as long as we're talking about Skeleton Warriors, why not show you a figure that I picked up at the last Collecticon just a few weeks back, and it's this Oracula. How cool is this guy? An arachnid skeleton mutant human. What is not to love about this? The crazy thing for me is obviously the Skeleton Warriors just had one line in 1994. I've seen photos of unreleased Series 2 figures, and I mean, that's a whole nother discussion, but those images, as cool as they looked, it looked like a whole different design team developed those as concept pieces because they're all brightly colored and these have some vibrant components to them, but these are all very dark and, uh, you know, just those vac metal components and little spots of color that contrast beautifully against the bone. The series two unreleased figures that I've seen are really colorful. Anyway, like I said, that's a conversation for another day. But when you see figures like this, and Dr. Cyborn and Shriek and Baron Dark. I'm staggered that these weren't a massive hit back in the 90s. Like, just the concept of Skeleton Warriors is cool to start with, but the way Playmates executed this line with all of the figures very much being unique characters, despite the fact that they only had skeletons to work with, I think Playmates knocked it out of the park. I think it's an incredible concept, executed beautifully with these figures, but it obviously wasn't a hit because it was only one series, so I don't know, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I, I, I wasn't supporting the line back in the day because I, I didn't really know about it. So I don't know whether it was marketing, I don't know whether the animated series was a flop. I honestly can't say. If anyone knows what the story is between, behind Skeleton Warriors and why we only got one series, definitely let me know in the comments. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going well and truly off the topic here, but uh, here we have Oracula. I, I love this guy. All the limbs are intact. I mentioned that the War Horse has no articulation. This thing has a million points of articulation with all the different... He's got four shoulders in his back. So he's got a ton of articulation. Once again, the beautiful bone details with the incredible dry brush paint deco effect. We've got vac metal forearm shields here that are all intact and all beautiful. And, uh, and this guy's fantastic. Once again, we've got some killer weapons. So we've got like a spiderweb style shield accessory. We've got a spring-loaded blaster with a, a six-pointed mace that launches out of that. And then we've got this incredible spider-shaped gun, or, or, you know, I think it's called the goo gun, something like that, I'm not too sure. But this thing is incredible. Now, I believe this is complete with the exception of a head accessory. 
that goes into the two peg holes here in the head. So I don't know if I really like my chances of finding that on its own. I might have to just get a, another oracular figure and just combine the weapons with the other one to complete him. But anyway, I'll, I'll obviously stay on the lookout for that. And this has the red gemstone in it. And like I said, this was a Collecticon pickup from Freaky Deaky Toys. So shout out to Deke for this piece. I am absolutely stoked. And, and now between the figures that Matt and Andrew have hooked me up with, the figures and vehicle that I picked up for myself, and that oracular, I now have the complete Skeleton Legion. I'm one and done on the Skeleton Legion. There's three good guys. Grim Skull, we've got Prince Lightstar, and a third good guy. Looking at this comic, there appears to be a female character within the Legion of Light, but I don't believe there was a figure for her, so I think there's just the three good guys, and I've completed the line. I, there's a couple of accessories there that I need, specifically the missile for the skull cycle, but I'm well and truly on my way to completing this line of skeleton warriors, and I'm absolutely stoked. Once again, Matt, Andrew, thank you guys so much. I know Matt knows how much I've been on the search. He, Matt knows exactly how much I've wanted to add these skeleton warriors to my collection, and he was very much wanting to gift me the first ones to get me started, just like he did with the superpowers line and also with the uh, with the Bucky O'Hare line. So. Uh, I, I kind of just beat Matt to it in terms of picking up some of those guys for myself for Christmas and also the Oracula at Collecticon a few weeks back. But I, I really, really appreciate Matt and Andrew for their contribution to the Skeleton Warriors collection. Now, before I let you guys go, there was a couple of other little items that Matt hooked me up with. These weren't necessarily Christmas gifts, but Matt is the kind of guy who will just do nice things just for the heck of it. And last time I saw Matt at Collecticon, he hooked me up with a mini comic to go with my Robin superpowers figure. So I'm stoked with that. Matt had a spare, so he was happy to gift that to me and I'm super appreciative of it. And if you guys saw part one of my Melbourne uh, toy hunt series of videos, a uh, series of two videos, I probably shouldn't use the word series, uh, but there was that pair of videos. The first one, we went to Lobos and I picked up a Dino Riders Pteranodon. Um, once again, it was missing a couple of accessories and Matt had some spare accessories and he was kind and generous enough to hook me up with those. So once again, um, you know, I really appreciate Matt, really appreciate Andrew. They make collecting, they make the hobby so special and not just toys, toys aside, they're just great blokes to be mates with and I'm really, really grateful for it. We've had a lot of good times in 2022. We've done two interstate trips. We've done a whole bunch of collector cons. We started a new collaboration on our Collectors Pack live stream series along with Ryan the Collector Kid. So it's been a big year for me and specifically this channel. Uh, and, uh, and a big part of that has been my friendship with Matt and Andrew. So thank you guys so much. And thank you lot watching very much as well. I really, really appreciate your support. Like I mentioned, it's been a big year for the channel. I've seen a lot of growth that I've been really happy with on this channel. I'm actually starting to get within reach of a thousand subs, which is super special. Uh, but look, the numbers don't matter too much to me. I'm, I'm just happy to make videos that make me happy. I don't do videos as often as I would like. I'd love to be putting out stuff weekly, but at this point in time, I'm having to settle for, you know, two videos a month plus a live stream. But I definitely want to pick up on that frequency, you know, in 2023. I think I've probably, by the time I get this one out, I think I'll have done maybe 26 or 27 videos for 2022. I'd love to put out 30 videos in 2023. So we'll keep seeing if we can grow and get to that thousand um, subs mark. But that doesn't happen without you guys. So I really, really do appreciate the support once again. I hope you've had a great Christmas and I hope you enjoy your holidays. But that will do us for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to hear from you in the comments as always. I really enjoy reading each and every one of your comments and chatting with you guys in the comments and also chatting with you on Instagram. You can always hit us up on Instagram. I'm at Crusher Collects. But aside from all that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've made it this far, you're a dead set champion. Have a very happy new year. And until I see you in the new year, cheers.